Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, but most importantly, Happy Lunar New Year, also known as Chinese New Year. So why are we here today? Well, we're here to celebrate the Year of the Tiger. Now, being born in the Year of the Tiger is a really good thing. It really is the beast. He is the strong beast of the Chinese Zodiac. So that means you're brave, you're confident, you're a little bit unpredictable. But what does it mean for the rest of us that are not born in the Year of the Tiger? Well, I believe this is the year that we're going to grab freaking this last two years of these pandemic strange weird situation and just face it let's be strong like a tiger let's be the beast of the situation and we're just gonna grab it and just you know but <laughs> that's the way i'm gonna look at it i feel like the year of the tiger is gonna be a really really good year for us i feel like 2022 is gonna be the year that we go you know what let's get out of here let's move on let's make this Let's just be the beast of our own future, I think. Yeah, I like that idea. So why are we here today? Well, the muse got me, that's for sure. <laughs> now, last year, during lockdown, it was an interesting two months without work, sitting in the darkness, in my pajamas most of the time, and scrolling through the old Instagram. And during one of my scrolling sessions, I discovered the most adorable little workshop it was to celebrate Chinese New Year of course and this little company which is called Yin Crafts she's based in London she does online workshops and she actually does workshops in real life now oh my god seeing people sitting next to people what is that but she did the most adorable little course and it was all online and it was to embroider this beautiful little thing I absolutely adore this now I thought this was a dragon but it's actually a lion and I'm really embarrassed after all my years of not realizing that it's a dragon so I call it a lion dragon now growing up in Australia I'm so so thankful we have such a rich Asian culture there we saw these dances all the time, especially during Lunar New Year. You go into town, go to Chinatown, there were the sound of the drums and these beautiful lion dances, just going through the street, celebrating the New Year. And that's what I loved about growing up in Australia because we have such a multicultural part of the world that we got to embrace so many different Asian cultures especially during this time of year because so many different cultures celebrate this so we got to experience the food we got to experience traditions and that's what i love about it so that being said let's go back to why we're here this beauty ah oh, she's so cute i'm really proud i made this all by myself but i saw this and went oh my god can you imagine that as a corset i knew that i had to make this into a corset there was no question i thought having that as this beautiful bold statement ah, ah, and looking back on what i did you know just hold that for me thank you i am not disappointed how this project turned out before we go into how to make this beautiful corset just wait I want to go through a little bit of the history of the lion dance. So the lion dance is traditionally from China. I've seen it performed with multiple people because you've got a nice long train. Hence why I thought it was a dragon. But normally speaking, it's about two people. So one person will be the head and will manipulate the head and just do the amazing little dance moves. And I love seeing the back person the most because they spent the whole time bent over holding onto this person's waist. And then at certain moments, it's so cool. They lift the person manipulating the head onto the shoulders so he can get up there and dance. So the line is meant to represent good fortune. It's also believed that you can um, push away evil. So right now, can we get one surrounding the house now because I've got the Rona, yeah? So you actually often see these lions and the way that they're stylized at people's front doors or gateways and it's just a really cool form of protection because also when you look at the Chinese lion compared to 
the Western statues. They're so different looking. And I love that they look that way because it kind of feels like they're, they're this really unique beast that will drive away and protect you as much as possible. And I love that idea. So I'm going through the whole history just so I can give you the best information here. Now it says it was originated in China about 200 AD which is so ancient and it says here which I'm curious to read it and research a bit more that it was no actual lion in ancient China. The lion like the dragon, phoenix and unicorn was a mythical creature. I really think that's cool. Then one of the pioneers of the Silk Road actually brought a real life dragon back to China from the west and that was the first time they really saw it. And it also says here there's multiple different versions of the dance. You've got the northern, you've got the southern. And I really would love to investigate that a little bit more. I had no idea. And this is what I love about what I do on this channel is because my passion for costume and history, I like to research and learn about all these cultures so I can share them with you and learn more about it. All that being said, let's get straight into the sewing of this thing. Now, I hope you have patience. I hope you have a very good sewing machine with a very good zigzag stitch and also a very good TV series to start binge watching. So what we need to do is find a really really good image that we can use as our basis for the embroidery piece. Now we want to pay homage to this little dude still but we also want to elevate it so it's unique and fun and different and I found this amazing image online. I just loved it. How cool is that? Now the thing you need to do is because you need the pattern you're going to print this out. Now what I did is that I actually printed out on four pieces of A4 paper. I enlarged it in my Word document to make it to the size that I felt that was right. I was kind of just eyeballing it and that's how I like to work anyway. And then once I print out all these four pieces, I put them together and I put them onto the corset so I could see if I liked that size. And it's a pretty generous size. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's the Goldilocks of lion dancing corsets. Can you imagine how cool I'm going to look in Chinatown this week? So now that I was happy with this, we had to transfer this pattern onto something else. Now, I heard about this fabric when I worked at Opera Australia in the olden days and I loved it. So they had actually made this into ruffles for a little pannier for an, um, a Victorian bustle. And I love it for, you know, you could use it for corsets. You know how they have the mesh see-through corsets. I use it for the French bucket panniers. I use it for all sorts of my undergarments because it's such a strong, sturdy thing that I don't have to worry about the structure, you know, going off. So it's a really good structural fabric. So what I did, I traced out this pattern onto this and we were going to use this as our basis to work from because we needed to be able to see what we were sewing. You could also use horse hair, but I do prefer working in this because I like to see what's going on each side. So now that I was happy what the design's going to be, how big it was going to be, and I traced it onto my little template I went rummaging and when I said I went rummaging I went ferreting through my boxes. So I put out a selection of fabrics. So remember my resolution reuse fabrics but I found some really nice options I thought that could be potentially his skin. Now I quite like this because it is upholstery fabric originally and it's quite dense so it sit nicely flushed. I could work on top of it because I'm going to do all the embroidery and also I would hold its shape which is a great idea. An extra stiffening. And then this is kind of cool but it's like is it too much pattern? And then that's kind of fun. That's a nice simple silk. And this, oh gosh I love this fabric. Like will that just hide it all and it'll be too busy? And then something, I forgot I had this. Goodness, I can't even remember what I used it for. Like that's kind of fun. So let's have a play. I 
don't know which one to pick. I really don't know. So let's play with some other fabrics that I pulled out. So I'm going to use lots of trimming, but like, so maybe I could put a bit of yellow here or a bit of blue. So I love this. So yeah, let's definitely use that. So what looks good with that? So that can be that. Oh, oh, I don't know. This is really hard to pick. It really is. Yeah, because like this could be the nose and like some of the little ears maybe. Now I've had this beautiful fabric for y'all. So let's throw that into the mix as well. Oh my days. Oh yeah, I have to use that. So that could be the swirls. I, I'm, I'm leaning more and more to this, but also, yes, I'm leaning towards it, but it's gonna be so covered and I'm, you know what? I think that's out of the question. I love this fabric so much, but it's gonna be so hidden. So let's save that for something else. Oh yeah, let's do that. Now I have this. Is that too much for something blue? That's so cool. Yeah, that is a really nice color palette. <gasps> Let's do that. I'm really lucky I found some really amazing fabrics. I had so many different varieties of red that I could play with. I cannot believe some of the golds I found, which also had Chinese style. The same with some of the blues. And then when I went through the ribbon drawer, whew, Oh dear, I wish I could have put more trimming into it. I was so pleased with what I had. Right, so yes, I've made this amazing pattern. So I think the solution to it all is to use that Pin this to the top, of course, iron it, <laughs> and then use that as a bottom, but then we could sew like this. So all the embroidery be done in the right matching colour, and then we flip it over and it'll transfer this way. I think that's the best way to do it. Now that I've chosen the main fabric to use, I pinned it down to the crin and I zigzagged around the edges so I can start working as our main base. And as I did that, I also went around all the important parts so that way it sat more flush and we didn't have to worry about like, you know, wrinkles. <laughs> so you wanna zigzag around the eyes and the eyebrows and the cheeks and the smile. And that means it also gives you a basis when you're working on top of the fabric instead of working from below the fabric and that way you know what you're doing you really want to be able to view the garment from either side because it's going to be a lot of tuck tuck what we're going to do here is i've stitched about a centimeter away from it all because when we go to sew it to the backing we want to kind of like whip stitch or something around it just so it's sealed. So this is just going to be the edging to finish it off so it is all concealed with this because this, if it gets on your skin, oh, oh, it does rip your flesh a little bit, just a little bit. It does hurt a little bit. So when you're using this, FYI, I would French seam it or um, use bias binding. Anyway, so we're going to cut around it so when we finish it off, it's going to have a nice little seal and enough room so maybe I can turn it in or I can stitch around it or bias bind around it. I'm sure something will come of use with it. But yeah, that's the plan o So now that that's done, you've got a really, really strong basis to work from. You're gonna start with, I think is the hardest slash easiest thing to do. We're going to embroider. If you have an embroidery machine, go you, but I'm partial to a freehand embroidery and I do love my zigzag stitch. So I set the zigzag to the zigzag stitch on the machine and then I put it on the largest, so that was a five. That way we could have bigger stitches but smaller together and it fills up the space. But also, you want to go over this a few times just so you have the block colour that you want and you don't have anything popping through. The places that we're going to embroider, we want to embroider the eyes. We want to embroider the mouth. 
We're also going to embroider the nose and the little star. So let's start with the eyes. Okay, we've got these beautiful different layers. Now what we want to do is by using some white fabric because then it's going to cut down a lot of the time. As well, we're going to stitch around the eye just so we have a block to work from. For the eyes, I decided to use, you can use whatever color you want, I decided to use black, white, yellow and blue. And then I used the little black zigzag stitch, so we got the, you know, the eyeliner of the eye. And then I just went to town, stitching and stitching. And you want to follow the guide that you had set up for yourself and just keep going until you finish those beautiful eyes. To the mouth. We're going to use that same white fabric because this gentleman he's got some lovely teeth. We've got to make sure we really bling those teeth. Now I don't think I mentioned before once you finish the main stitch and the shape you want around it what you're going to do you're actually going to trim this excess fabric around because that way you can zigzag the edge and make it cleaner. You want it clean. And is there's no little scraps of white sticking out. You don't want whiskers on it, do you? And again, let's zigzag around those teeth. And then I just went to town. I had to put in his teeth, I had to put in his tongue. It was a lot of Midsummer Murders, that's for sure. <laughs> now, once that's done, let's start on the nose and the little star piece there. I used orange silk and I just continued using variety of different colors that I wanted to use and cool little swirls to make it very interesting. The last bit of embroidery we're going to use with fabric is going to be the cheeks. I wanted to create cheeks that were similar to my original design, not like the one I had printed off. So I wanted to make sure I had those swirls. So I swirled some gold in there and I swirled some blue in there. later with some trimming just to make it really pop. So now we're done with the main embroidery on the garment but I also did a little bit more embroidery here on the little ears just to have a little bit of a definition a little bit of frou-frou. Righty so now it was time to get started on the glorious moustaches. <laughs> So with 
this, I kind of went top to bottom because I saw in the design, the ears kind of went into the eyebrows and the moustache went into the eyes. So I kind of went it that way. So what I started doing was the zigzag button stitch again along the edges. So it just sat really flush and we knew it wasn't going to go away and I wanted to continue on that element of the design. And then after doing that, I saw that some of the fluff kind of went into the head. So I kind of just started pulling it out, like fro his little eyebrows. And then I did the little talons here and I did his little gills here. And then I went to the moustache. Now, the moustache. I decided to stuff it. <laughs> I wanted this moustache to be a glorious Bavarian man in the mountains. Okay, what we did, we did the buttonhole stitch zigzag again. But we went around here, the top, but we left a little bit open here because using all the off cuts of the fluff, I decided to stuff it in there. So we got these beautiful little cheek dimples. So you want to give them some filler, one would say. <laughs> Yeah, he needs a little bit of Botox, doesn't he? Oh, wicked. And then to finish that off, once you're happy with the stuffing of it and the volume, just do a little zigzag stitch at the bottom to close it all up. And then we go onto the eyes. Those are going to sit flat against the costume, so just like we did before. And then the eyebrows, they needed to be stuffed as well. So follow the same system, stitch around where you can, leave a little small opening, stuff it up, and you're good to go. So now he looks like my grandfather slash Bulvarian mountaineer. Oh, for God's sake, bloody fluff. We're going to start the hand sewing process because we want to add all this beautiful decoration. I personally started by doing the little swirls here. Using this beautiful gold rope, I hand stitched it down so we could really showcase these beautiful little cheeks. So now that the gold rope's done, I like to do this because it's like really accentuating his moustache. Just add its little gold beads to make it really pop. And also with rope cord, you know, it does unspiral. So you kind of have to like glue, sticky tape it. So you kind of just put a bead on top of it to hide, you know, the mess. <laughs> now the piece to resistance, I think was finding this gemstone in Shepherd's Bush years ago. It was made for this costume. So I, cause she's such a whopper, I glued her on with some fabric glue. And then I also just stitched around some of the gems so it'd really stick on. And then put another little gold bead on it just to really tie all the gold beads in together. Now you're gonna find this really odd. I was so excited to sew the nose on. I'm so, so happy in my shop I found these pom-poms. Because like, how cool is these little pom-poms there? So he had to have a brother with the same sort of pom-poms, didn't he? Oh, you have to show off the pom-poms. I just love them. And the fact that they're huge. So I sewed those on and then I found that the eyes needed some little beads as well. So I put two little beads in there as well. So now we go down the body to the mouth. Oh, I had some good grip and I'm really pleased. I added this beautiful gold and red trim. Just, I feel like I needed something in between, you know, a little bit of a lipstick. I'm so, so happy that I did this because I was originally going to use some white feathers as the beard to make it really like, you know, whatever that action is. But using the gold tassel, it's perfect because as soon as I pinned it on and picked it up, I went, there he is. That is the line dancing costume you see in Chinatown. There he is. He's come alive. Just doing this added so much to the costume, like so much. He, beca he became the character that way. It felt like it. And I just love that. I loved that moment. It's just, you know, that moment where it all starts to come together. It's just a wow moment. So I went, oh, 
and I sat back and I thought oh my god it's done I created something beautiful and I was playing with some of the ribbon I'm like okay so I don't need that ribbon I don't need that ribbon I'm like oh but this red feathers I did want to use somewhere oh it doesn't work in the beard I can't do layers in the beard and I'm like oh let me just play going around the face I was like and then I found some more of the other ribbon that I had put out and I put them together and, went, oh my God. and it just made the costume elevate even more. So before we start on that, we're gonna do the backing. Now earlier, I showed that I had left about a centimeter of excess around the face. So I've done the buttonhole stitch around the main thing, done another centimeter, buttonhole stitch that, and then cut away all the excess that we had originally. Now, the reason we did that is because I wanted to edge it because I wasn't going to bag it out I just didn't think it would look right we were going to marry up the top design with the black fabric and just do a black buttonhole stitch around it that's way it made it pop a little bit more it had a bit of extra room to give and also the black kind of bleeds out into the background and to the black corset itself take your time doing that make sure it's all really really encased so once you're happy with that and it sits really beautifully flush together then we can sew on all this beautiful trimming and you've got that excess one centimeter to be able to really stick it on and not compromise any of the original design work now once you're happy with all of this and you don't think there's anything else you need to add you're going to attach it onto the corset you could realistically machine stitch it in certain places but I hand stitched it I did some invisible hand stitching around the nose and around the eyebrows and you can place it wherever you want you could have it really low on the corset you could have it high on the corset so maybe it could sit here but I originally had it a bit too high so I just moved it down a bit more and that meant that the beard covered more down there so I could really move my hips and make the beard sway in the wind and there you go there she is I absolutely adore her she's Beautiful! generally cannot believe I've made this I, I, I cannot believe this is my work this is beautiful it's, it's not me being arrogant but like this is such a statement piece this is so unique this is fun this is special this this should just live here literally like look at this this is so cool <laughs> the thing I love the most about this project that this a little spark of inspiration became this and it just shows to me what a little spark of inspiration can do so I hope you really enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed this video I hope this video makes sense she says to editing Diane because she's struggling to do this because the road is really hitting her hard today <laughs> I want you to take away from this video not only is this awesome corset I want you to leave with a joy for a different culture. I want you to celebrate old cultures. I love living in London because London is so multicultural. And that's what I loved about living in Australia because of the multiculturalism. You get to appreciate and learn about different cultures. I absolutely adore celebrating Lunar New Year. I love getting to immerse into a world that is not my own and learn and appreciate and be inspired by this Chinese Asian print it's beautiful 
Look at these color palettes around me. Look at this fabric around me. It's just beautiful. So again, if you did like this video, make sure you give a thumbs up because it does support my channel. Please subscribe because I'm feeling very inspired at the moment and it's really enjoyable to be sitting here creating content and sewing again and also I'm going home to Australia so I cannot wait to take all of my camera gear and just explore and enjoy my time to reimmerse into another culture that I'm part of but I don't know about anymore because I've been here for three years during Rona. So until next time, happy Lunar New Year. I hope you have an amazing year. I hope you celebrate the Year of the Tiger and be the beast that the tiger is. So I really hope you enjoyed that. I... Oh, fuck me!